so now so by each questions okay i'll give you certain time to answer okay you can try to find the answer okay so your questions can be like this it can be in the form of picture okay so can be in the form of picture where the numbers can be given okay i will be sending you this lecture okay so no need to record it okay i will be sending you the recordings of this so there can be numbers like this in the next ray and then they will ask like what is this okay which part of x ray is this okay so which part of x ray is this okay so your questions can be like this okay now can you just attempt and try to find out with your knowledge of how you have completed okay so you must have completed the upper limb right the bones must have been taught so can you just tell me like what are the structures which you can see basically what is this uh, what does this picture indicate it's an x ray of a shoulder shoulder joint or shoulder girdle okay and ap view anteroposterior view okay of the shoulder okay and first you are seeing the soft tissues so first you will be seeing along the muscles if there is any abnormality okay so there are no abnormality and then mainly this is with regard to the bones okay and there are bones are there and you can see the ribs okay is it right or left usually in any x rays it will be indicated okay so usually but here in this x ray it's not been indicated in any x ray if you see there will be a number a hospital code or the number and it will be written as r or l right or left okay so here it's been removed okay so it's not been seen here okay and apart from this what are the structures what is this bone this bone is humerus okay and here you can see this is this scapula and this is the clavicle okay so this is the gross okay the bones okay grossly but here they are asking specifically what is this so number one is greater tuberosity number two this is from the scapula sorry from the scapula the lateral end of uh, scapula has got a fossa what is that the glenite fossa the lateral border of the scapula okay number 4 is this a fracture this is a epiphyseal line okay it's not a fracture so this is an epiphyseal line that is the growing part okay the bone which is growing okay the epiphyseal region okay of the bone okay which means that this is not the x ray of an adult who has grown okay this is probably the of a young person okay who is still growing okay in the teens maybe okay so this is the epiphyseal line and what is this number 5 for a cord process okay so you usually they will give a picture and then there will be some questions based on this okay so so what is this okay so what is this one name the muscle which is getting attached to this number 5 okay do you know any names of the muscles which is attached to number 5 parochoid process you said right parochobrachialis okay parochobrachialis the short end of biceps okay so these are the two muscles which are getting attached here 
okay in the parapart process okay so your questions can be like this or it could be like this one okay so here this is a question the following part of branch of the brachial plexus resists contribution from the ch spinal nerve so which one of this is correct any idea so is it lateral cord lateral pectoral nerve posterior cord nerve to the rhomboid muscles suprascapular nerve nerve to subclavius muscle yes very good posterior cord how did you find out good very good so here you can see the lateral cord it is formed from c5 and c6 okay the medial cord it is formed from c8 and t1 okay and the posterior cord is from all the three the posterior divisions of all the three okay so c5 c6 c7 c8 okay t1 the posterior cord the other things so here they are given only two cords they are given lateral cord and the posterior cord okay so posterior cord is the answer it's included okay can you see the posterior cord c8 comes okay but they have not given medial cord instead because medial cord also comes from c8 instead what they have given is they have given the branches from the lateral cord okay the lateral pectoral nerve where is the lateral pectoral nerve it's a branch from lateral pectoral nerve is a branch from the lateral cord okay sorry the nerve to rhomboidus suprascapular nerve and the nerve to subclavius muscles all this as you can see here suprascapular nerve dorsal scapular nerve which is the nerve to rhomboidus nerve to subclavius okay so they have given the choices from here isn't it so you need to know when you are reading at a picture it's a broad picture okay and from here they will be asking questions like this okay the following which one of the following has got a c8 spinal nerve or they could ask in a form of a clinical scenario where they may ask say that the between c c6 and c7 there is a fracture okay cervical spine 6 and 7 okay so there is a fracture okay sorry c7 and t1 between c7 and t1 there is a fracture so which spinal nerve is involved or which cord is been involved okay so you need to know accordingly okay sometimes instead of posterior cord they may give any branch from the posterior cord okay you know the branches from the posterior cord okay the mnemonic is alna right upper subscapular lower subscapular then medial pectoral nerve sorry alna the radial nerve okay the radial nerve and the axillary nerves okay all these are branches from the posterior cord okay so they may give instead of posterior cord they may give any one of these branches and then they may ask which nerve is being affected okay if there is an injury to the c8 spinal nerve okay it can be difficult but once you practice it is easier okay your university exams here will not be as hard as this one but by the time you go to year 2 you need to be practice you, you need to practice all these types of questions okay the questions will not be direct okay so here sometimes the questions may be direct like the posterior cord which spinal roots what is the root value for the ulnar nerve or the axillary nerve okay we may ask you directly but 
in the ifor questions it will not be direct questions okay you need to understand the question before you answer okay okay so this is yet another question the following part or branch of the brachial plexus has a terminal branch that supplies the skin on the medial side of the arm so for this what you need to know what is the nerve supply for the cutaneous nervation for the medial side of the arm what is it good medial cutaneous nerve of arm so medial cutaneous nerve of arm it's a branch from good so it's a direct question okay the medial here also you can see here medial cord okay the medial cutaneous nerve of arm instead of asking the medial cutaneous nerve of arm is a branch from which one of the cords okay so they have given a big stem okay so which you need to understand okay and then apply it okay so the terminal branch which is the one which supplies the medial side of the arm so now you need to think and then say that this is medial cutaneous nerve of arm and then you need to find out the medial cutaneous nerve of arm is a branch from which one of these okay so this is another question okay so this is it can be asked on your course also okay so what is the course of the nerve so during its course in the upper limb the axillary nerve okay lies so for this you need to understand okay when you are coming to the dissection hall we will be showing you the location of the axillary nerve okay so you need to know like what is the origin and how does it go and which muscle does it supply and also the root valve okay so which one of the following is the right answer in front of the lateral epicondyle of the humerus the lateral epicondyle of humerus is below okay it is below but the axillary nerve is on the top near the head of the humerus okay b against the spiral groove of the humerus yes this is the answer okay sometimes there can be more than one answer which is correct okay so try to if they say like which correct correct only one single question single answers single answer mcqs so where there is only one answer sometimes there will be multiple answers for the mcqs so you need to go through all the answers and check out okay so here we will just see the other ones whether if it is true or wrong it is medial to the brachial artery in the cubital fossa no axillary artery never comes to the cubital fossa it's against the surgical neck of the humerus so you said yes for b also only d okay then behind the medial epicondyle of humerus medial epicondyle is below so no in front of the medial epicondyle of the humerus again no so axillary nerve is present near the head of the humerus okay so here against the surgical neck of the humerus is the right answer where is the spiral groove the spiral groove is in the shaft almost in the middle okay the axillary nerve never comes across in the middle of the humerus okay it winds around the surgical neck of the humerus okay so that's why in cases of surgical neck fracture the axillary nerve gets damaged and what happens when the axillary nerve is damaged which muscle is affected deltoid okay the deltoid okay so now the next question if deltoid is affected which action is which action is uh, is not possible abduction very good very good abduction from which Okay. 
so what happens is where was i yes if deltoid is affected which action is been lost abduction which abduction so abduction is it the entire abduction of the arm or certain part of the abduction between 15 to 90 degree so you know that you should know what are the muscles which is responsible for the initial 15 degree which muscles which muscle is responsible for initial 15 degree supraspinatus okay the supraspinatus muscle is responsible for initial 15 to 20 degrees then until 90 degrees it is by the deltoid and beyond 90 degrees beyond 90 degrees it is the scapular rotation as well as the trapezius okay so you need to know which muscles is responsible so which action is lost okay so the question can be like in an indirect way a person is coming with inability for inability to do abduction okay from 30 to 90 degrees okay so which nerve is involved or which part that could be a fracture okay so the questions can be direct like this or it can be indirect also okay in the form of a case scenario okay so here you can see a shoulder this is next question a shoulder separation that involves the lateral end of the clavicle sliding on to the superior aspect of the acromion process okay would most likely result from the damage of so damage to which one of these ligaments will lead on to this deformity that is the lateral end of the clavicle sliding on to the superior aspect of the acromion is it costoclavicular sternoclavicular coracoclavicular glenohumeral or coracoacromial so here if you see costo clavicular costo means rib to the clavicle okay this is present mostly on the medial side so here you can see all the ligaments except for the costo clavicular it's not shown it's on the medial side and the sterno clavicular that is also on the medial side of the uh, clavicle okay the sternoclavicular these are on the medial side and usually if this two is lost then the medial end of the clavicle will be raised above the stern okay not the lateral end because these two are present on the medial end coracoclavicular ligament so it is only amongst these three coracoclavicular coracoacromial or glenohumeral the glenohumeral is present near the extreme end okay it is present here glenohumeral and it is between glenoid cavity and humerus it is nowhere related to clavicle so glenohumeral is also not the answer so it's between coracoclavicular or coracoacromial okay so here you can see coracoclavicular and coracoacromial okay the coracoacromian is between the coracoid process and the acromion process of the scapula so if this is damaged the clavicle is not going to be affected so what will be the answer coraco clavicular ligament okay so this is the one which holds the clavicle and the clavicle okay coraco clavicular ligament you understand okay so you need to go through the pictures anatomy is nothing but the pictures okay don't get confused by different terminologies if you understand the name it is easier okay you know that this is acromion process this is coracoid process clavicle plane of okay so this ligament is coraco acromion because it goes between coracoid and acromion process this is between the coracoid process and the clavicle so it is coraco clavicular ligament okay this is between coracoid and the humerus so this is coraco humeral ligament okay 
All right. And whenever you say, whenever you study something, have a clinical knowledge behind it. So what happens if this is damaged? Okay. Why am I learning this? Why should I know this? Okay. If you have that in your mind, it is easier for you to understand and it becomes interesting. Otherwise, anatomy is boring. Okay. Think of a clinical scenario or what happens if this structure is lost, if this structure is not working. If this nerve is not working, which action is uh, which muscle is affected? When this muscle is affected, which action is lost? So you can make a quiz amongst yourself, stating like say this uh, the person is unable to do this one, this action. So which muscle will be affected? Okay. So indirectly you can ask which nerve is affected. If this action is lost, which muscle is affected? Which nerve is affected? So usually in the musculoskeletal, most of your questions will be like this. The person is unable to do like this. So which muscle is involved or which nerve is involved? Okay. <clears throat> or in this ligament injury, how does it look like? Okay. <clears throat> All right. The next one, the dorsal scapular nerve. The dorsal scapular nerve would most likely result in paralysis of the dorsal scapular nerve. Yes, supraspinatus, deltoid, rhomboidus major, trapezius. This is a direct question. This is a direct question. The dorsal scapular nerve. Brachial plexus is over, right? Brachial plexus is over. Can you of you can you tell me? You can refer and tell me the answer. Let me see if online students they have. Yes, anybody? Dorsal scapular nerve. Just now I told you. The dorsal scapular nerve. There is a dorsal scapular nerve. Rhomboid. Okay. The rhomboid muscle is affected. Okay. <clears throat> that was a direct question. Okay. This is another question. I know that this has not been taught to you. Okay. But just for your practice. After injury to a nerve at the wrist. Okay. A nerve has been injured in the wrist. The thumb is laterally rotated. The thumb is laterally rotated. Normally, if you see, all the other fingers will be facing forwards in the hand, whereas the thumb will be looking in a different direction. Okay, so this is one of the important things, especially in humans, and because of this, we are able to do fine actions like writing. Okay. We are able to hold between our index and the thumb, okay, and then able to write, okay, able to do sewing, okay, certain fine actions we are able to do because the thumb is not in the same direction as the other fingers, okay. But in this person, because this nerve is involved, the thumb is laterally rotated and adapted. The hand looks flattened and ape like. Okay, if you observe the hands of the A, all the fingers will be pointing in the same direction, including the thumb. The thumb also will be facing in the same direction. Okay, so that's why this is called as ape thumb. Ape thumb deformity. Okay, so this nerve, so if there is a defect like this, which nerve is affected? Very good. The median nerve, has it been taught? Okay, good. The median nerve injury. Okay, the median nerve injury will lead on to ape thumb deformity. Okay, ape thumb deformity where all the thumb, all the fingers will be facing in the same direction, including the thumb. <clears throat> so what will the person not be able to do? This person will not be able to do writing or any fine action. 
which involves the index finger and the thumb finger to be together like writing so putting a thread inside a needle okay so all these actions he will not be able to perform okay okay so this is quite a long sometimes the questions can be quite big but don't get panic understand the question so in an automobile accident the patient fractured the neck of the right radius okay and damaged a closely related nerve at physical examination the patient exhibited all the following except which okay so first you need to know the neck of the radius okay so here look at the key questions the key answers here it is neck of radius in the neck of radius there is a nerve so first you need to find out what is this nerve which is present in the neck of radius and when this nerve is affected which is what are uh, what are the features of it okay any idea what nerve is involved radial nerve so what happens when the radial nerve is affected wrist drop so there will be weakness in the extending the terminal phalanx of the thumb okay extension all the extensors is lost okay in a wrist drop okay so in the wrist drop only flexion will be present the extensions will not be possible okay or it will be weak so weakness yes it will be present a loss of skin sensation on the lateral part of the dorsum of the hand yes okay and inability to extend the metacarpophalangeal joint of the index finger metacarpophalangeal yes a normal ability to adapt the thumb at the carpo metacarpal joint adapt a normal ability to adapt the thumb adductor so which is the adductor pollicis okay the adductor pollicis the normal skin sensation down the medial border of the hand the medial border of the hand okay the medial border of the hand <clears throat> okay so what is the answer hand is not been completed right hand is not been completed okay i gave you this as a question so when during your hand so what we teach is during the session what we will teach is the hand the muscles which are present in the hand these are the muscles and these are the nerves which are supplying these muscles and these are the actions of these muscles of the hand <clears throat> okay so this is what we teach okay so these muscles are present okay the nerve supply to these muscles are these and these and the action of these muscles are <clears throat> this ones okay so they will so this is what we teach but in the exams they will ask questions like this okay there is a beautiful picture okay a uh, uh, beautiful this one uh, paragraph which is given in your snails okay in your snails which will indicate which nerve is being involved in each part okay i'll show you at the end okay so this i give you as a homework try to find out not now after your hand topic is over you can try to find the answer for this one okay even after the hand if you are unable to find out just let me know i will tell you the answer okay i will tell you the answer okay so try to work it out <coughs> okay so this is from the brachial plexus okay uh, a 30 year old plasterer was finishing it's, you can as you should see that is a huge stem okay which indicates the mode of injury okay so there may be some unnecessary things but look for the key points okay was finishing a difficult ceiling in a remodeled kitchen he was standing on the top of a step ladder with his right arm above his head 
as he used his right hand to move the trowel loaded with plaster across the ceiling he suddenly felt a huge spasm over the right over the tip of the right shoulder at physical examination of the patient in the emergency department it was found that pain in the right shoulder recurred in the middle range of abduction and that there was an extreme tenderness over the greater tuberosity of the humerus okay so what is the most likely structural damage in this patient is it fracture of the upper end of humerus if there is a fracture of the upper end of humerus there will be pain throughout okay tearing of the deltoid muscle it could be tearing of the deltoid muscle yes okay fracture of the acromion process no lesion of the rotator cuff rotator cuff have they taught about this rotator cuff muscles yes the lesion of what are the rotator cuff there are four muscles right supraspinatus teres major then subscapularis good infraspinatus okay so these ones so is it lesion of the rotator cuff tearing of the trapezius muscle no definitely it's not the tearing of the trapezius muscles so here you can see the middle range of abduction there was extreme tenderness okay so it could be tearing off the deltoid muscle okay or it could be a lesion in the rotator cuff so the middle range is usually the deltoid muscle okay but there could be some injury to the rotator cuff also in this case okay so that could be both this must both the answers could be correct okay so tearing off the deltoid muscle okay because it has extreme tenderness over the middle range of abduction okay so this is just an introduction to show you the different uh, you can't access the old question papers but there are plenty of questions which are given in your um, plenty of questions which is from your library okay there are multiple choice questions from your library you can access those questions if you have or uh, you can ask the library 